All right, still working on uh, section 27. Now I'm gonna do the access panels. These are from Air Ward. Um, there's been some complaints online about the quality. I mean, it's fine. It's, I don't know what number aluminum it is. It feels like a lighter weight aluminum, but they're fine. The biggest complaint is that holes don't line up and they're good enough. I'll explain to you what I mean. The other biggest complaint is that his customer service is not good. Uh, I've called him two or three times. Uh, one, there was a little bit of a delay in shipping and then I think he forgot to ship them out because he was back ordered. I called him, he was great. He got him out the next day. And then I didn't get the correct instructions with mine. I called him on a Saturday morning. He answered the phone and walked me through everything. So I, I can't say enough good things about it, but I do want to show you this. So here's what I did. I'm on the L piece and I have it positioned in the fifth hole. So four holes showing back from the front. And then on the right side, a lot of people talk about starting it on the third hole but then it gets in the way of the fuel selector valve a little bit. So a lot of people said started on the fourth hole because of that. So what this gives me is a little more rearward access from one side, a little more forward access from the other side with about a 50% overlap. So if I had to, sorry, I got a pretty bad bite there. So if I had to stick your hand or two people's through both, so you kind of have a little more front, a little more back. This is how I'm doing it. Now you can flip flop it. Uh, I, I, I don't really know. This is just how I'm doing it. Now, the one thing I do want to show you is what I did, because the holes it comes with are so small. I drilled a number 30, or I drilled two number 30 holes, not through here. I just took the, the, cover, the rear uh, doubler off, drilled two number 30 holes, and then clico those. And then what that gives you is this, it's gonna be very hard to see, but with getting my two holes clicoed, you could see like these three holes lined up perfect, but then each hole out, you're off by a tiny bit. Um, when we get all the way to this hole again, but the point is if you use only the two holes to clico, then start drilling, using the van's hole as your guide, you're not gonna like do any damage to anything. It's not like there's gonna be an extra hole. They just don't line up perfectly. So the same thing happened on that side. It worked out perfect, the technique. I just did the two, click out it in, and then now I'm gonna drill all those holes and then I'll start figuring out the rest of it. Okay, so still working on this Airward uh, access panel here. I just wanna show you what I've done. So previously I talked about drilling out these bottom holes. I drilled those and got them all matched up and cleaned up. Then I did the outside piece, the doubler. So, I, and by the way, I'm flipped over now. I'm on the inside of the tunnel, not on the outside. So then I secured the doubler. Then I put the, the plate and drilled through all of the holes that will be eventually the screws. Then I'm going to remove everything, re clico this plate, trace it, use the corners a unibit to extend the corners to my traced line, and then I'll cut it out, and then this should fit right inside. Uh, and all of these holes that I drilled will no longer be on the tunnel because they'll be cut out, but they will be matched to the doubler for the nut plate. Um, so yeah, I know it all kind of looks a little bit backwards now, but then when this goes onto this side, I think it'll all make sense. I'll show you what I'm doing next when I do it. Okay, so I've removed the doubler from the inside of the tunnel. And now I've placed the, the access plate <clears throat> on the outside of the tunnel. 
And then now I'm gonna trace this with a Sharpie. And like I said, then I'll, I'll use a unibit to expand the corners and then we'll cut just inside the trace line and then this will fit inside of this against the doubler. Okay, so I um, traced it and removed it and now I've used my unibit to expand the corners and then now I'm just gonna cut down the inside of the line. I can probably go one more on the unibit, I definitely can. But I feel like, as with everything, I'd rather, I'd rather take more off later than take too much off now. So, um, yeah, we're just going to start cutting. And then once I get in there and start filing and rounding off the corners, I think it'll fit fine. But time to pull out the Dremel. I tried my, I just bought this uh, multi, you know, rotating, like vibrating tool with the metal cutoff bit. Uh, my testing wasn't very good on metal. It works great on fiberglass. I've used it on fiberglass and plastic, but it just didn't seem to work very well on aluminum. So I'm gonna stick with the with the cutoff wheel and my 90 degree on the, uh, the Dremel. So it turns out the Dremel does suck for this and the multi-rotary tool works. Okay, so this is the right side. I just finished the left side. I didn't take a picture of it, of course, because I was so excited that I finished it and I took it all apart. But here's what I basically did. So uh, before I cut out the hole, I think I showed you, I put this plate here, um, clecoed it, traced it, and then pulled it out and removed this. And then using the hole that was there, I used the unibit to take me to the corner. And then from there, I cut it out using um, the multi-oscillating tool. This guy right here with that bit and a Dremel a little bit. And then to clean it up, I just kind of started grinding away at it. And then I put this back in and now I'm going to drop this in there and see how well I did. And I'm not perfect, I could tell. Like it's not quite, but it's pretty good. So now what I'll do is I'll clean up the line that I have. Should have done that first, but I'll clean up the line I have and then I'll drop this back in there and I'll make some markings of where I need to grind a little more. Um, like I think I need to grind a little more right here, but we'll see once it's back in, but it's not a lot. I, I was really careful to cut I mean, we're, we're maybe a 16th of an inch off in a few places. So um, you can see like that corner there. Uh, I need to just clean that corner up and that'll fit in there better. So things like that, same thing in this corner, clean it up a little bit. And then this side will be good to go. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, pretty good. So pretty happy with that. The other one fits just as well. Um, I've got this little kind of um, high-speed rotary tool. You just use your Dremel, but then I've got these round. I mean, they're kind of chewed up now, but what I do is I kind of work the metal inside of here. And then that's what I do for any of these inside ones. So you can see you get kind of a polish here, but then it just makes the inside super smooth. So I do that. That's what that is. When this plate comes out, I'll get the edge of the plate. Right now I'm gonna upsize to number 19 drill for the number eight screws. And then um, I'll get it all drilled out and ready for the nut plates. I know that this will get, this is 0 .040, so this will get um, machine countersunk for the heads on the number eight screws. The instructions aren't very clear. 
Some people have dimpled these um, number 40 screws. I'm not sure if this is 0 0.040 also, so you can kind of do either. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna dimple or countersink. I have not figured that out yet. I'm gonna do a little more research and I'll let you know. All right, so here is the finished product. Um, I went ahead and I dimpled these and I think they came out really well. Uh, you can definitely machine countersink them, but um, I dimpled them, they came out perfectly smooth. I'm gonna probably end up carpeting this, so that'll be fine. And then I dimpled um, the recess hole for those as well. I don't have the cover plate, it's somewhere stashed away, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Now the kit, you can see that these last few rivets are not done. Um, that's because these are pull rivets when you put the, the floor in here. And the kit does come with the pull rivets that, that you need for this. Because um, it's a little thicker than the ones that Van supplies. So again, I, I, I found it to be a pretty complete kit. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, I know the holes don't line up perfect, but as I showed earlier in the video, that's not an issue to work around. I know a lot of people who cut their own panels for this. I just don't know if I would go through all that. Um, in my other videos where I talk about the firewall, um, I will give you some tips and pointers that I have learned along the way with that. But this was basically just the air ward access panels. Um, so again, just for reference, here's what I did. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Well, here's, you can see where the fuel pumps go. Um, so what I did was on the left side, one, two, three, four, and then it intersects. So I guess there's four showing. Then on the other side, it's from the back, one, two, three. And then I think it intersects somewhere right there in the fourth one. So again, that's what I did. And I feel like I can get pretty good access to, to both. Some people only do it on one side, but hey, that's what I did. Um, yep, yeah, so there you go.